when you compute these derivatives, that's the hardest, the most intense computational task, and you do it as follows. This is the formula which computes these weight derivatives. I'll show you the formula first, and then I'll explain why we have this formula. So, when you take this weight derivative, which is the derivative of this function, the first step you do is you differentiate the square of the magnitude of a vector. This is the known relation. When you differentiate the magnitude of a vector, this is as if you mag differentiate the dot product of the vector with itself. That's a product rule, and you end up having 2 times the vector times the derivative of that vector. That's exactly what you end up having here. 2 is cancelled by this half. Now, when you focus on this derivative, which is the derivative of your network function with respect to weights, and this network function at this stage is taken at this input, even though it doesn't say so, but actually at this input, you have to use another example, another, that will be another usage of a chain rule, and that's what you end up having. Look at this. When you differentiate your network function with respect to weight, S weight at the kj neuron, the result of this differentiation will be this factor. To understand why this derivative equals to these two factors, we need to understand how the minor perturbation to this weight propagates through the network. I summarize this in the following diagram. If you perturbate this, if you perturb this weight, I'm sorry, this perturbation will first affect the A functions in the immediate layer to the right, and then it will continue on all the way to the right to the F and the arrow function. And that explains how the chain rule works, because if you attempt to find the F derivative with respect to that weight, that will be the f derivative with respect to the a function to the right, immediate function to the right, and then times the derivative of this a function with respect to that weight. This factor is exactly the b term from here, from this forward propagation formula, and this factor is the delta functions we found in the back propagation formula. After combining everything together, that will be the formula which delivers weight derivatives of the arrow function. Now we can put our head around everything what happens in one single epoch. In one single epoch, this short formula, it looks long, but it's actually short because it compresses a lot of computations. For every input vector in your training set, you compute the f values, which means you run your forward propagation formula, all of these recurs recursive relations, and capital times for every input in order to find these pieces. And in order to find these deltas, then, you will run the back propagation this many times for every node to find all of these deltas for all of your inputs. I emphasize, neither of these factors reflect the fact that they depend on this u index. For every different U index, for every different input in your training set, you will have different sets of Bs and deltas. And all of these must be computed in order to find these weight derivatives in one single epoch. It's a lot of computations. If you saw any implementation of the Emma of the multilayered perceptron, you would find this there, and you will also find that people attempt to run these computations in parallel a lot. So there is a certain degree of variance in the way people implement this, but after all, all of these implementations, they do all of these steps. They compute F and deltas for all of the axes in your training set through these two back and forward propagation and different times and that's one epoch, then they adjust the weights and then run the epoch again, all of these computations all over again. And that's the end of my presentation of how the multi-layered perceptrons work.